We're so busy talking that I don't even want to ask you the first question because it's already interrupting how many other things I want to talk to you about. But first, um, because I've just gotten to immerse myself in 911, I wanted to ask you, I mean, you're so such a genius and so prolific at doing so many kinds of roles. What was it about playing this character that made you want to commit to something that could be a long-term character to play with 911? <laughs> Go nine, long term, and yeah. and for for so long, I I think I resisted that. You yeah. know, the idea of of doing a show that may go seven years or more, whatever. You know what I mean? Because just the nature of you know, of this business of being an actress. I love how, you know, that you get to change and grow and put on, you know, different characters and ideas and suits and interact with different people and directors and actors and situations and locations, yeah. you know. So the idea of staying put, you know, isn't one that I've, you know, embraced, mm -hmm. I guess. But, um, you know, as you you know, mature and have kids, mature and try to find roles that are interesting and situations that are interesting. And this was one, the relationship I had developed with, you know, with Ryan Murphy and with the, and Brad Falchuk and that company had been so good and so good for, for women and for mature women, well, young women as well, you know, uh, uh, just a different aesthetic, you know, across the spectrum, um, such respect and regard for that, that, um, just the um, leap of faith that it took because there was no there was no script per se to look at you know mm -hmm. it was just a, a brief conversation with Ryan that he had an idea he wanted you know we I could stay home you know and oh. raise the children <laughs> the two beautiful children oh. that I have and um, you know trying to balance that but uh, the idea of being a cop and just complicated um, relationship, the relationship she has with her husband and what we were going to go into, you know, that he was, you know, down low, he was coming out of the closet and how that was going to affect their family dynamic. Mm -hmm. So all of that was really sort of compelling as the previous four years had been in, in that company. So it was like, okay, without a script, I'm ready to, uh, you know, jump off the ledge and with faith, there's a net and it'll be all right. Which is incredible. And you, it's amazing that once you're in it, you realize this, this narrative we've been telling ourselves as actors that on a film, we're going to have so much more freedom to be in the gray and the complication of character. But then once you do it, you realize that with the time, mm -hmm. you get to discover on any given day how incredibly different or how complicated mm -hmm. we are as human beings and our differences. So watching just what I've seen of the show mm -hmm. as you navigate I have this time. relationship. You have yeah. time, you have time. To yeah. show all the facets exactly. of this woman. So there's a lot of times in films, I don't know if you feel that, you know, once you've completed, you know, the three months of whatever the time is, the the hour and a half, two hour movie. It's like, oh, and you see it. Oh, had I known, I know. you know, I, I've, I've grown now, but I just have to release it and say all that I know now up to this point, I give it, I give it all. Exactly. Right. But it is, it's heartbreaking when the yeah. last day of the shoot mm -hmm. is when you have this great Brilliant discovery <laughs> about uh -huh. who this person is. Mm -hmm. And that is what's amazing about television is having that kind of time and working with someone like Ryan Murphy yeah. and reading what you all do in terms of behind the scenes, mm. par gender parity, diversity yes, parity. Yes, Ryan's yes, really yes, made yes. a commitment to that. That's so beautiful. Now look, my family is everything to me. And there ain't no trouble from the inside or evil from the outside. Now, we may be buried in it up to our necks right now, and I may want to slap you with my left hand, but my right hand is holding you and the kids tight. How do you choose your roles? Because when I think of you, I, I think just, you know, just fearless, you know, just a fearlessness and, a, and an authenticity. How do you, is it something that you're very, uh, um, you know, decisive about, or is it a feeling, or or what? What's your? I mean, I'm process? sure it's the same as you. That sometimes it is that mm -hmm. filmmaker or that showrunner mm -hmm. that makes us feel like they'll always catch our fall, that mm -hmm. they're there for us. Mm -hmm. So we want to hurl ourselves into into their vision. Um, and if we're lucky, it, it that is connected to also a character that makes us go to a place we've never gone. 
Um, I always think about um, the amazing good fortune of being a woman now in the world and watching how determined we are in our growth uh, everywhere around us, how demanding we are of um, the level of authenticity and respect and transparency we expect in the world. Um, and so playing characters that um, don't know their own value mm -hmm. has always interested me. And that mm -hmm. is, is a theme I keep inside my head a lot because it can be a very powerful corporate executive mm -hmm. or a broken homeless girl, but mm -hmm. both of them don't necessarily trust their worth. Um, and that's just a really interesting thing to think yeah. about for women and as women. Mm -hmm. um, but as an aside, I have to say this to you because I was thinking about it when we were taking pictures. How about that this is a manufactured space of two actors talking, <laughs> but you are the only person that when we met, we connected and years ago yes right we said That's to each right. other would you ever want to sit at a restaurant and just talk about our lives as women and mm -hmm. acting and working and we had this actual I, in real life we did we, we did. had this conversation a number of years ago what what was it we, i don't know yeah Maybe. we found each other and that i've never had that where we found each other really? and said, can we just go yeah. have a meal together mm -hmm. and you inspired me so much Aww. And obviously, and I've never day. forgotten. I've never forgotten your spirit either. Oh, you know, and that you were balancing various. heart and and finding a connection to something deeper than all of it, and how it fueled you as an actor. And you did something I've never forgotten. Whoa. Do you remember a young girl, the age now of daughters that we have, around twelve, came up to the table, and she was a huge fan. And we were in the middle of something deep and we were mm -hmm. eating and she kind of brazenly interrupted and said, I need your autograph. Mm. And you said what something to the effect of, <laughs> okay, come sit down, I wanna have a talk with you first. Mm -hmm. And you schooled her about <laughs> how beautiful it is to acknowledge someone's art or to tell someone that you admire them and how important it is to mm -hmm. share compliments and also to like learn how to navigate when's a good moment yes, yes. and how to respectfully say, is it okay? Is yes. this a good moment <laughs> to interrupt? And you put your arms around this girl and she was so moved to be seen and heard and be taught by mm. you. Oh. And I thought, how did you do that? Like have a teachable moment and it makes such a deep impression it on a girl. It doesn't always happen. It you were incredible. I must, it must I've have been you. I must have vibe. Must have been lovely. Well, <laughs> it, taught, it taught me too, and it but, taught me because we rarely tell each other how much we appreciate each other in the world, in life, in work. And sometimes those moments, they 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 feel to me as if like, as if you know, people are because we're on have this stage and this visibility and sometimes as you say it's there's sometimes there are intrusions you know yeah. and it's it can be it, in an opportune moment they don't know what you're going through a feeling of the conversation you're deep in this but it's their moment and it can't be missed you know they have to say hello they have to get a a piece of remembrance something yeah. and a lot of times i feel as if and they're gone i know and i don't have anything i'm you know, I'm a human and I'm feeling yeah. with both hands. I'm feeling too, so I want something. I want a human connection as well. So there are moments when I'm really aware or, or you know, settled that it's like, no, 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 wait. You gotta give me something too. Or we have to really look into one another's eyes. Just don't take and, and go. And that's what you, know, you did so with that this girl. Leaves you sort of, you know, yeah, it was incredible. I've never seen anyone else allow for a moment no. like that. It was really beautiful. Hey. Good morning. Thanks, Mom. Oh my God, I fell asleep. Well, that's a good look for you. Oh my God, I'm just locked in. I can't, I can't turn it off right now. Can you recall any moment in your career that has been particularly challenging, whether it's uh, a moment in time or being a, a particular project or? Well, uh, oh my gosh, yeah. I feel like I can speak to that in mm -hmm. so many ways, but um, on this, 
this movie, uh, The Tale, mm -hmm. I was playing uh, my director. Yes, yes, and yes, that yes, was a yes. radical and amazing, yeah, what was very that unique like? challenge. Mm -hmm. So she wrote and directed uh, a piece that is more about how we retell ourselves mm -hmm. the story of our lives. Mm -hmm in order to survive mm -hmm. them. She had been right. um, sexually assaulted as a 13 year old. Right, right, right. And she had... Which is so disturbing <sighs> because you and I both have daughters who are 12. Exactly. You know, and we see how, <sighs> how youthful and immature and impressionable they are. And, so it's, and vulnerable yeah, yeah. to someone seeing mm -hmm. them. And, and she, uh, I think, really protected herself yes. in order to survive it by telling her that it was in its own way this story of a first connection or a first love and it was only years later that she was able to see what it really was mm -hmm. which obviously was abuse and deep trauma but she needed to be the the owner and mm -hmm. the narrator of her own story mm -hmm. and, and she I said, understand don't that. make me a victim yeah Right. Exactly, yes. and no, and no perpetrator should ever take your own uh, heroism of your life story from you, and that really moved me. But to be sitting with her at the camera as we're retelling the story, what was that story, like day to day? It was amazing. It was so bizarre and difficult, and to to have to be fierce with your director when you have strong opinions about your character or what's working for you emotionally while it's their I life. I think you would not <laughs> I tell do you it what that you're way. Right now. <laughs> um, and it was complicated and very complicated in the adult narrative. Common plays my lover, her now partner, um, and he and I both, luckily she gave us lots of room to improvise, you know, what a love story looks like mm -hmm. when a writer isn't writing the idea of how someone who's a survivor of sexual abuse, how their adult intimate relationship is defined. Mm -hmm. My writer-director is that person. And intimacy is not impacted in the ways you expect. So to talk about sexuality not being the place that she feels um, a lack of connection or a need to mm -hmm check out, um, but finding the other areas that she has. That was amazing to me. Um, she taught me a lot in that way, and I think common too, how we that understood. That was a very nice relationship between the two of you, I think. Um, he's I think so you, uh, he, he's wonderful, but I, I think, you know, when you just connect with someone on yeah. stage, I think you brought, you brought out the best in others. Oh, I think well, there must be something very special about you on a set. Well, yeah. I don't know. One day when I find myself <laughs> to you, okay. that's what I want. <laughs> I like that. I like find that. Find that with I each like other because that. that is it's the most unique gift. Whether it's your filmmaker or your co-star, when you connect, you know, you can't help but tell the truth. What was it about the tale that it, you know, you're reading it, did you meet the director or just read it and connect to it or I mean, this or, is. So I mean, immediately, or did you have to process it and think about it? Because when I watched it, and as it goes along, and you begin, it begins to unfold, and that sort of massaging of that idea that this 40 year old man has of this young, impressionable, and the ideas he's implanting into her psyche and her mind, it was just like. That's so devastating. Ooh. I, and I think it is because as much as I felt um, isolated from the trauma that she walked mm. through, I realized that the story she wanted to tell about memory mm. is something we all relate okay. to because we've all retold a mm -hmm. story to ourselves mm -hmm. in order to survive a story mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. heartbreak, of mm -hmm. family divorce, of yeah. loss, mm -hmm. and it, I started spinning. I started reading it and realizing yeah, 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 yeah. how much I had made up. You know, yeah, to same. survive something. Same, because I know when I was when I was very young, I had brushes of something like that in my life. But I, and I remember years later, I tried to bring it up to my mother, 
and she was like, I don't want to talk about that. I don't want to talk about that. Yeah. And I, I, I guess as a grown woman, I thought she was strong in that moment because she took a stand for me and, you know, and made sure it never happened again. But I think as a mother, now that I put myself in her shoes, it would be like <gasps> such a, you know, just a, a, a moment of maybe personal shame that you, Absolutely. you know, that you disappointed or you let down, you know, like here in the film, it says the most important thing you're supposed to do is to, you know, protect, protect your, your kid. Well, and, and I have to say, it's, it's a, such an amazing conversation to have, not only with you as a fellow female, but also an actor. The conversations we never had that have shifted in this zeitgeist of being transparent about our experiences. Mm -hmm. When this moment came, uh, this time's up moment, and we were all doing press and being interviewed and sharing each other's stories and experiences, and, and many of us, and I'm sure you asked, you know, did you have experiences? What has the industry been like for you as a female? I remember in the first week saying, you know, I was, which I was. Mm -hmm. I was so blessed. I was raised by two actors. Mm -hmm. I was raised to know what should and shouldn't be, mm -hmm. how to mm -hmm. set boundaries. Mm -hmm. I was so lucky to not have those experiences. Wait a minute. Oh, that moment that I thought was fine, which yes. absolutely wasn't uh, fine. Uh -huh. That moment where I thought, oh, this is just generational and that's how people talk or mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's how I, I guess men should treat me or I just replayed my whole childhood because I started acting at 11 right, right. back to myself and it was shocking so I that was that aha moment even in terms of this film and everything else that we do survive stories sometimes mm -hmm. by um, retelling them in a very different way than the truth is now you you said um, you started acting professionally right at 11, which is amazing, you know, I don't, I hadn't even thought about that at 11, but being raised by two incredible actors. Mm -hmm. I mean, you talk about a legacy, right? And um, what, and of course we would think when you have a legacy, that there's such positivity behind that. Was there any drawback to having two parents that were actors and you trying to go into the, you know, you going into the field Well, as my well? mom, knew what we know. <laughs> she, she knew about the inconsistency of an actor's life, uh, uh, the, the hardship of mm. being, in her case, a single mom and trying to mm. do it, um, the ebb and flow of career, mm. the lack of great roles mm. consistently, uh, even more do so. Do you feel that? Do you experience that? I don't know what's happening, but I feel like we're having the time of our life now. Okay. I really do. I, I will. Don't I certainly feel like that. <laughs> Isn't you that know, amazing? You know, yeah, yeah. We feel so it's lucky. The like of times and roles and, and opportunity has been pretty amazing. Part of me doesn't, you know, can hardly believe it. But uh, me it's too. Good. It's good. And, and, and what was considered daring even 15 years ago to us, like, oh, wait, this role, and you'd hear the studio executive or, or if it were a television network, you wouldn't even have it on television. Ooh, she seems awfully angry or you know, whatever, whatever those things are. She's not very, there's no romance in the storyline. You know, these ideas are now completely squashed. We can be as complicated and uh, messy and beautiful and sexual and broken and funny in one role as, you know, the men's roles yeah, right. were. And that was unheard of, I think, for my mom, my godmother was Shelley Winters for them. They had an era where it was common in independent film, but you wouldn't see it in studio franchises or on television. It's just amazing how it's opened up in so many, so many different mediums for us. You do not get to choose who lives and who dies. Really? Because I was under the impression that kind of was my job. That mother was no less of a child than her baby. You gonna get someone killed. Well, maybe, but not today. Yeah, you keep making jokes. I promise you, the next time you screw up, it'll be your last. Is there any challenging moment either with 911 right now as you're balancing, you know, mm -hmm. 
your film career, your family, and doing this, oh. I'm sure, overwhelming schedule? I don't, um, it, hasn't, it hasn't been too bad. I mean, the, the challenge is, I think, um, you know, it's just the day-to-day -day challenge, you know, of, of, of going to work. But the schedule hasn't been too, you know, un unbearable. I mean, because it's more of an ensemble. So we all get to play and sort of in an equal type balance. Maybe, maybe, you know, if you got just, if you were just able to act, that would be awesome. But because it's television and network, you have to do other things. So it's a lot of publicity and press, you know, maybe on the set, maybe off the set, maybe during your hiatus when you think you have a vacation and you still have to, like, get out there and, you know, and pitch it and sell it and stuff like that. So maybe sometimes that can be challenging because you just want to go to work. Yeah. You know, I just love being on the set. And if those hours are 14 or 16 or 18 hours, it, it's, you know, I don't get tired, you know, to the 17th hour. No. Right. But I wanted to ask yeah. you, because you asked me about, you know, sort of being raised by these actors, mm -hmm. and I shared, I, I kind of was told going in what the yes. challenges were. Yes. For you, when was that moment that you realized the challenge of being able to do what you wanted to do as an actor? Was it immediate? Have you watched it throughout your career? Have there been those difficult moments where you had to realize it was you who were going to have to define your own mm. story? How, how has it gone for you in that way? I, I've been, I've been, I, the way I look at my life and, and the career and the choices, I feel as if I've been pretty blessed, pretty blessed. You know, I, I went through a drama school, came out, went to New York, spent about seven years in New York before coming, you know, going west, you know, with this mass exodus to go there to get into a pilot, a TV show then, which never happened. <laughs> but um, maybe graduated from drama school maybe about a year and a half before working, and you're wondering, am I losing all of my <laughs> power and strength? You know, so like in The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> You know, and doing the survival gig in order to pay the rent and stuff. So you're wondering and seeing your partner at the time just, I mean, just a blaze of glory across the sky, you know, and just wondering, oh. And I remember him saying, oh, the only reason you got that is because of me. And I felt like, uh-uh, you can't define who I am. You know, I believe that everyone has a, a gift and a talent. And this one is I own as my own. You know, so you can't define that. And I think uh, me saying that they, to him also was just a strengthening of myself against something that, of course, comes out within this last year with a, you know, a number of our colleagues with the Me Too mo movement. But uh, moving to LA and and being put in a box, you know, whether you're going to be sort of this sort of actress, a TV actress or a film actress, and sort of being sort of herded in this one direction, and you don't feel like you can break from that herd and do something different. But I always want to challenge myself and do various things. And when you think this is who I am, then I want to go over here and do this, you know? Uh, of course, doing a lot of biopics, <laughs> like you're every woman. But I want to do something totally different one day, and I'm open to it, to something that's, you know, risky and frightening and challenging, you know? Yeah. Naughty and... <laughs> yeah, forever and always. <laughs> yeah. And, and it is weird, though. I mean, you particularly, and I have a few times, I mean, you've played such extraordinary women but do you ever feel like, sometimes I do feel like we, we carry their strength with us mm -hmm. because they really do teach us. All characters mm -hmm. teach mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. But Tina Rosa, I mean, these right. Right. iconic legends, right. you know, they're teaching everybody to be, mm -hmm. but to be actually inhabiting their skin. Yeah, that they certainly, they certainly amazing. did. Just in, with Rosa, just ordinary yet extraordinary. Oh. And that's, that's, um, Anyone can be that, you know, or Tina, you know, that amazing strength. And just to portray her, her life <laughs> was a trial by fire. Oof. And nothing has been as difficult as that moment, as that time, <gasps> and which really taught me how ultimately, I, I had no idea at the time, how strong I was and what I will do 
to, to see it through to the end, you know, and to make the best of it, you know? That's so incredible. Mm. I am not a victim. I don't need you or anybody to call me a victim, okay? Because you have a clue about my life. So we need to stop this now. I know you, you know, you were nominated for a, an Oscar along with your mother in the same year for Rambling Rose, yeah. which was pretty amazing. That was amazing. I don't know how many people can say that. Maybe no one else, yeah. but only you I and know. she. That's incredible. That is astounding. You and know? It's a, how it great is. is that? Yeah, that, and that is incredible. Mm -hmm. To go to the Academy Awards <laughs> between your mom and your grandma. Yeah. And to watch my Who's grandma. an actress also. Yeah, but watching my grandma sort of honor her, her girls <gasps> and get to share that moment was pretty extraordinary. Mm. And, and one of the things um, that I probably am proudest of, I did this movie Citizen Ruth, which I think in a way um, I was proudest of because it was a comedy mm -hmm. about the choice issue in this country. So nothing could be more complicated to navigate and I had to be as intolerable and almost disgusting as possible <laughs> to make the humor of it work. Uh -huh. And that was just so fun to have to hurl yourself into it. And Alexander Payne was directing. It was his first feature. And mm -hmm. that was like time of my life. Um, so that was probably a, a huge highlight, too. How about for you? Uh, um, let's see. Of course, what's love? Tina, that was um, a, a defining a defining moment for me. I think up until that point, yeah, if you were my mother, my family, my friends, then <laughs> you knew my face and my name. But after that, it uh, you know, you know, you're more in the in the public arena and space, you know, an awareness of you. And some of that was was difficult because people would come and touch you and grab you and call you and. I think a little bit of me retreated after that because, you know, sometimes actors are really shy individuals. Before then, I mean, I'm with you, we can have a great time, gregarious, all of that, but sometimes you had to re retreat just because people would grab and you sort of have to <sighs> tamp, tamp that down so that you can control the moment or not yeah. be taken off by this one and that one and their wants and their needs and their desires, but you have to keep a piece of yourself, you know? I would bet, especially with that role, yeah. to, th to feel like they had ownership because they knew her too right. or something. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's a bizarre. You know, there's something else that we, I think, in a, in a sort of way have in common, which I, I thought about today and that was interesting. I saw the Ellen episode that you did. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and how impactful that was, you know, in the world, in our life, in our thinking, you know, as a society. And then last year, I did an episode, you know, yeah. also where I played Lena Waif's yeah. mother in Master of None, and how that, was that so continued, incredible. you know that conversation. How about and that narrative? 20 years later, you still even had to continue that yes. conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's but so it was shocking, easier. It was, <laughs> yeah. It was much, it was much easier. It's, yeah, it's still a conversation that goes on. So conversations we have to continue to have. have but to. the groundwork yeah. of that, yeah. because I know, I, 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 re I recall how impactful that was to Ellen's life. Yeah. Right? After that. And it was because incredible. the show, the show, went off the air right after oh, that. Oh, and right? none of us worked, and we just did a 20-year anniversary mm. discussion on her show, with the two of us and Oprah. The mm -hmm. three of us were mm -hmm. having this conversation together that we had massive security challenges for a long time after that show, <sighs> and. It, it is Does that make shocking. any sense now? Isn't that incredible? To do that episode, and it affect your, your livelihood. It's just And what you love. Yeah. Because of the stand you take. And how embraced the country is to have her in their living room every day now. Mm -hmm. They worship Ellen. Right. And right. There, this rejection. So you just pain. have to hang in there. You have you to. You have to never, never give up. And never get lazy. Yeah. As a culture, mm -hmm. we can never get lazy. Mm -hmm. We can never think we've resolved mm -hmm. issues of
the politics of race, gender, mm -hmm. sexuality in this country. We're, yeah, you know. Gonna, yeah, as we say, an ongoing conversation. Wow. <laughs> Till our last breath. And it is, yeah. and it is amazing, though, to sit with our children mm -hmm. at this age and they don't even understand what we're talking about. No. That's the glory of it. Yeah, you know? I guess. <laughs> I mean, they are in L.A., I but guess, they don't. Yeah. My daughter's like, you know, having conversations with me about politics, saying some guy is like running for office, saying he can grab a woman wherever he wants. Mm -hmm. What is he talking mm -hmm. about? That's just, you know, the insanity of Ownership, she she didn't understand, and my mom. I know course, I certainly was her. not aware of, you know, had this sort of awareness that they have at twelve. When we, I mean, it's unbelievable. Was just so, yeah. No, know, this generation, they're in the streets. Yeah. They're our revolutionaries. Yeah.